Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. Commissioner, are very impressed with the presentation that you had today. How realistic is it that you think, um, how real, realistic are do you think the chances are that you can get these changes implemented within the NCAA? I think the first step, um, and it's the way I, I sort of positioned it, the first step is to uh, see if we can create the kind of discussion and the kind of dialogue that is necessary. And you notice, I, I painted sort of a broad picture, uh, not a lot of detail more analogous to an impressionist painting than a photograph, and with the idea that um, the dialogue will begin to fill in the gaps and, and see where the issues are, and, and you know, there'll be pros and cons. Um, but I thought it was kindly because, the, uh, as you know, President Emmert, and say President Emmert, uh, has called a presidential retreat with 50 presidents in August um, to discuss the issues that he wants to discuss. I think he sees the the, uh, the landscape the way I see it, and uh, I was hoping that maybe some of that that I talked about today could serve as a as some of the uh, somewhat of a national agenda for them to talk about. Then once it's talked about and if people like some of it, Dr. Emmer will have to decide where to go from there. You know, what's the process? How do you how do you move it along? And whether he decides to do it through the general processes or whether some special process, that's really uh, something that uh, we'll find out more about after that presidential meeting. Well, I think you get any, um, as far as uh, the other uh, conference commissioners, if you've got any support for any of them. Yeah, um, we've had some general conversations, and as a matter of fact, I called um, several of them over the last two days to tell them what I was planning on talking about. And uh, I met with uh, some, some enthusiasm and, uh, you know, and some of these ideas I think that they share with me, not necessarily every one. Um, but I think you'll find that the mindset of the other commissioners is not unlike mine. That uh, to come in here today and just talk about all the championships given some of the climate that we're experiencing, which is just not, not enough. And, and uh, that's not to say we don't have a lot to brag about. But the, today's talk was really not about the SEC, but about, about national issues. What are the chances of uh, adding uh, Texas A&M or another school to this? I didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, well, you know, um, back when there was a lot of activity, I, I said carefully that we were pretty comfortable, uh, but we would watch to see um, if there was going to be a significant paradigm shift. Um, and the way I, in my mind, at least thought about a paradigm shift, it didn't happen. You know, I think, I think the, big, uh, the Pac-12 and the Big Ten have helped themselves by, by adding institutions. Um, and so now things have settled down for the time being. Uh, people have asked me today, you know, uh, am I still where I was before with regard to being only in a reactive mode? And my answer is that part of my job responsibility is to try to ensure the long-term best interest of the SEC and its strength. And so, uh, in order to do that, then I have to pay, I have to think about a lot of different things. And so, uh, with that in mind, uh, and I'm not talking about any institutions. You know, we will continue to view the world from our prism now, rather than from the prism of other people, and uh, make decisions that we think we need to make for ourselves. Do you think that the uh, NCAA is going to divide off again and have another big super division and to break them down again? I don't think there's any interest in the NCAA of creating another division. I really don't. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner, there's recently been a, a lot in the media about uh, one of the member schools in Mississippi, a coach from a member school, having a uh, back and forth there in the coaches' meetings in Destin, Florida, with the NCAA vice president, which ended in uh, the young lady telling that coach that we'll let you know when we're finished with what's going on. Is that much to do about nothing? Have you hated that transpired? What are your thoughts on that? It should have transpired. Well, one of the things I try to make clear um, whenever I can is that the SEC 
it does not investigate our institutions. That's really the, the role of the NCAA. And so there really isn't anything that I can add to what an NCAA representative is saying. Because we're just not in that, uh, and we, don't do, we don't investigate. And so uh, those questions, I understand them, appreciate them, but they really play, need to be placed at the level of the NCAA. Not, not Appreciated for the controversy in some of the last couple of years. Can you talk about the addition of Steve Shaw now? Well, let me clarify something. I don't think officiating was too controversial last year at all. The year before was not a great year for us, and we had several issues. Um, when Rogers Redding was asked to serve as the national coordinator, well, which was, which is a great move for the, for uh, college football and for him. Um, we were kind of thrust into the situation of having to hire somebody. And Steve, as I think all of you recognize, is really also the premier, if not the premier referee in the country. And we hated to take him off the field. But he's very talented, um, and uh, he knew that uh, uh, we, were, we wanted him, and we were delighted he agreed to, to come and work with us. He's full time and uh, already has made an impact. So now, of course, uh, life will never be better for Steve than it is today. Because once the game starts, you know, there'll, you know, there'll be issues. But um, I was very pleased with the progress we made from the year before the last year. Um, and I think we took care of a lot of things. And one of the reasons we were able to make some progress was the year before, we, because of the technology, we were still looking at standard definition while you at home were watching the game in HD. And if you ever sat and watched standard def next to a high def, it's incredible. So last year we, were, we had a high def, and I think that helped us a lot, particularly in the, you know, the guys that are making those calls in this But we're, we're delighted to have Steve this In regards to officiating, Shaw in a recent interview said a central command center was being considered or discussed and that potentially you and him might be involved in replay issues. Is that Absolutely it? not. Absolutely not. The, uh, the command center, what we call a command center, is a room outfitted with five high def television screens. So we can watch <laughs> all our games at once. We have telephone access to our representatives who are at the various games, um, and we can monitor what we need to monitor. The jurisdiction, when a game commences, the jurisdiction of the game is exclusively in the hands of the officials. And that exclusive <coughs> jurisdiction remains in place until the game is, is over. We will never get involved in any decisions made by our instant replay officials. Is that being, clear enough? That's pretty clear. Good. You talked about being more transparent. Do you see a time when, if there is some controversy, that maybe the lead referee steps up to the mic? And I think you will have noticed that if there's real serious controversy in the past, we have been transparent. You know, if you don't like the past interference call, you're not going to get a lot of transparency from us. You know, if there's a rule issue that needs to be clarified, yes. And to me, to, to contribute to transparency, one thing we did this past year that we've never done before is we invited the media to come and we created a mini clinic. We, the media came to the, we set up a clinic, Steve ran it, and the, the, just like our officials do, they came, went to class in the morning, did a lot of things, and put them on the field. And we're going to continue to do that. So if you really want to find out about officiating, you sign up. When we uh, announce the meet in the clinic, and you can do it, and we'll put you in it, we'll put you in a uniform or a shirt, and put you on the field, and you can stand next to a back judge or a field judge and watch a 270-pound guy who can do the 40 and, and 4-2 come at you and, and decide whether or not there's a foul or not a foul. I mean, that's transparency to create an appreciation of the difficulty and the skill of our guys. We find those guys past the conditioning. You mean the media? Yeah. 
I'm not going to embarrass them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you plan on using the rinse that replay a lot more this year than you have in the past? As far as calls, it might be questionable. Yeah, I, I, I want to be fair to your question. You know, the instant, it isn't a question of us using instant replay. Instant replay is something that, that all conferences follow. The, the rules are the same. Um, every play is reviewed. We have a technician, we have a communicator, we have a replay official in the booth with, with first class HD equipment. Every single play is reviewed. And if an official feels like, and not every play can be used in instant replay. You know, judgment calls, whether it's holding or whether it's mass interference, those aren't part of this. Was he in bounds? Was he out of bounds? Was it a touchdown? Was it not a touchdown? Those kinds of things. Um, and then if the replay official feels that he needs to look at the play, he'll say so. But every play is required. And this is a question of us using it more or less. One more question. As you look at the TV deals for the newly formed Pac-12, the Big Ten, in light of where the SEC signed theirs first in 2008. Do you feel there's any money left on the table now for the SEC? The way I respond to that is simply this. When we did the contract, we created a concept in our agreement called the look-ins. And the look-ins are designed for us to be able to meet and talk with ESPN about changes in the landscape, changes in technology, and what needs to be done to achieve everything that we set out to achieve. And so uh, you can draw whatever inferences you want to draw from that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good few days.